Oh yeah. This one goes hard. So many memories if you grew up in the 90s like me. Fist of the North Star. Ken. Kenshiro. I'm sorry, I hype me up with this type of music. <laughs> I know it's annoying, but... Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Ah, yeah, let's go. Let's go, my friends. Well, look at that. I, I tried to put you like that bigger. Looks cool. Hello, everybody. Let me know, everybody. I see some new faces here. Susan, Felicia. Uh, Felicia, you're not a new face. You're always welcome. Stop. Stop. Sometimes you have to keep the high music for only the hypest moments. Otherwise, it gets out of control. But I've got this. Let's try this one. All right. Okay. Back. Come on. Bring me the music. Okay. Nice. Everybody, welcome here. Oh, 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 oh. oh you're, you're taking too much space. I don't have any room on my own screen. You're taking way too much space on my screen, chat. How are you all doing? So, some new faces here. Um, if I don't, if you're fits your first time, let me know what you do, where you're from, and uh, but uh, I see some some regulars and new new people. That's cool. That's cool. So good to be with you today. We're gonna talk drawing. I'm going to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do it again. I'm going to record some stuff for my tutorial again, but it's going to be give us some time to just have a little quick art chat and just uh, enjoy. And then we're gonna do a, a drawing after my favorite artist. One of my favorite artists, uh, he used to come from the town I lived in before, Pierre Paul Prudhon. Gorgeous. Um, artist mostly known for his drawings from the 18th 19th century and well we're gonna do some um, this drawing actually this one here this one and uh, but yes before that I'm going to um, just straight up sharpen pencils just <laughs> but bear with me please stay for just i just need it i have a tutorial and i i'm working on my drawing course this is all related to my drawing course i'm all like in drawing course creation mode right now and like i'm trying to optimize my time as much as i can so i'm going to Record. I'm gonna take this camera, put it in place, and record how I sharpen my pencil to get. Well, either that. I'm gonna sh share with you how I get leads like that and why it matters and stuff like that. So, I'm gonna do that live um, and press record. I have an extra screen here that I can press record on and and I'm going to use that for my tutorial. But in the meantime, we can talk, we can discuss, we can say hello, we can say, we can discuss about where you are from, how's the weather where you live, is it summer or, or winter, is it like, well, because I, we have people from New Zealand, like, I'm puzzled, like, is it summer? Even though it's winter, technically, winter is just hot and summer is cool. Or whatever. <laughs> Maybe it's just wet season cold, um, and dry season. I don't know. I don't know. But we can talk about the weather. We can talk about everything. And um, But we have to talk about one thing, my friends. And this is... This... This is... Double the art. Uh, hold on. Um, hold on... Okay, uh, yes, we have to talk about that, double the art, 
because it's going to be next Friday with the amazing and incredible Alpai Effa, which is going to be joining us next Friday. But very important, and please note that whenever time, whatever time zone you're in, whenever the stream normally starts, like the time of like today, just subtract one hour and the stream will start there. Okay? Just one hour before the, the normal time. Okay? Because not everybody is crazy like me and likes to paint at night. And Alpi is not like that. <laughs> so he prefers to join if we can make it at 8 o'clock because he's from Germany and he's going to be... Um, we, we are on in the same time zone, but if you're not on the same, same time zone, let's say normally it starts at 3 uh, p.m. for you. Well, it's going to be 2 p.m. then. Uh, let's say normally it starts at 6 p.m., then it's going to be starting at 5 p.m. That's all there is to it. And you have to join because it's going to be crazy and amazing and so chill and great and uh, and yeah that's all it's going to be cool okay um, now wait, I had one more thing what was it oh absolutely the art challenge we have to check before uh, there I've got one thing after that just still so the art challenge is here so last time i didn't have time to review because as i was um making the the <laughs> as i was reviewing the submissions some new ones were sent during the live so i i missed um tons of them and sorry for that if you don't know the discord is here the atelier the link is in the description or you can type exclamation point discord in the chat to get the link get there directly and and you'll join here and you can join the art challenge which was about self-portrait so we have this one here which is really cool did i like it already no i haven't liked it i'm gonna add this one and i'm gonna add, I'm gonna add this one and this one yeah because i like it when there's more emotes and this one as well i haven't liked it look at that oh super cool uh this one and this one um this is what i'm doing now first portrait in oil whoa, whoa it looks so tiny it's well i have a scale problem how big is it hmm oh i'm wondering well if you can well yeah compare it to the size of the keyboard it's not big right that's pretty cool so yeah my usual okay mandatory when you're in the discord have to leave tons of of uh, reactions another one super small this is very difficult like you're not making it easy on yourself working so small like that working very small is is very it's tricky uh, in general if you have the choice try to like the general rule is if you have the choice try to make the head the size of approximately the size of your palm it will give you the best size ratio for the head which gives you enough space to put your brush in and put just enough details not make it too big which would be kind of awkward like a portrait with a face that's too big is like ooh <laughs> weird and very like strange just don't don't make a like big head portrait like that's like a head that looks like that would look terrible um, but too small is a, is a very tiny very difficult to reach and very difficult to judge shapes values proportions and all that uh, 
because just the size of your brush mark, like it already takes so much space. Uh, oh, this is the finished version by Balsam. Look at that. Amazing. Love it. I loved it before. Love it even more that you have the what the, the coffee, the tea. I like it. Look at that. And the green kind of... What is this? What is this? Is it absence? What is the green stuff? Whoa. But looks really cool. I love the blue. It really complements well the little touch of blue sign here. Really works wonders for that. Uh, four by four. Is that the size? Yes, Nicole, I have a Discord. Yes, absolutely. It's tons of fun. This one I really like. Oh, I actually liked it. Oh, sorry. My bad. So I'm just going to add some more of these. And yeah, super nice. Wow. Very interesting texture. Is this a, a... Is this done with a fork or is this a scratchy palette knife? Or is it a comb? And this one, really good as well. Oh. Really, really nice everybody. Wow, I'm so proud of all the submissions on the Discord. I really didn't think that there would be so many. It's incredible. It's incredible. Let me show you something. Let me show you something, chat. And we're going to talk about the the future of this, of this channel before we get to some actual interesting stuff. Uh, look at that. New cam. Hello. So, this is my attempt at making a B cam for my stream. Um, the thing is, I can have this lens, which is a wide angle lens, or I can have a lens. Oh, I, I have autofocus problems. I'm going to talk about that. Or I can have a very super sharp zoom in tele lens that would just actually pick up the, the details. And it's much better than the actual zoom that I have currently, which is just a, a digital zoom. But this cam is my old, like the very first camera that I started with on YouTube. And as you can see, it doesn't have autofocus properly done. It doesn't have clean HDMI, which means that you all have, like you have this square. And the only way for me to remove the square is by turning off the autofocus. But then, in this case, I'm not really in focus and it doesn't focus right. Uh, I, this camera is just too old. Like this, the old model that I had. And, uh, but I, like currently, this will have to do, <laughs> will have to do with that. I'm gonna show you the setup actually because uh, I kind of like the setup that I did. Look at that here. I'm um, sorry, for, forgive me for the mess. It's on a sort of a perch here that I've created. <laughs> but this old cam here, yeah, it doesn't work. It's not HD. Well, it doesn't have HD, you know, HD mode directly on a computer. So uh, this will have to do and when the stream does really good or if I get tons of super chats and I get very rich, I'll buy a new camera and I'll, <laughs> I'll switch to a new camera for that. Uh, so I'm not letting you play with that with the commands because yeah, it's not, it's not proper. Oh, wow. Look, don't look at the mess. Don't look at the mess. Nothing to see here. Oh, thank you, bad autofocus. Thank you very much. Nothing to see here. Ah, oh, man, it's good to be live. Really like this. So, yeah, thinking about 
I've been thinking about something about the life. I'm going to show you something really quick. I really, I found this uh, YouTube creator, great guy, absolutely amazing. I, I, I just found one of his videos and he was just, um, he's actually live. Cool. He's doing chill streams and I really love this. That's super cool. He just sits there and goes into sort of focus mode and gave me an idea. I really want to start. Um, so look at this, just showing you. Oh, um, probably his music is copyrighted. So he has like focus timers and basically he does just, he hangs out in his studio and he has also times where he talks with, you know, his chat and all interacts with chat. But he also has moments where he just, you know, just works. And you don't necessarily see what he's working on. So he's he doesn't have any pressure on what he's working on. And I'm thinking about adding more lifetime for me, like doing this, just being live, and call this focus mode, sort of. And basically the idea of focus mode is, I'm not showing you what I do because Showing you what I do is, it's always like a performance, it's kind of a, a lot of pressure. I, I don't mind doing it, I, I'm still going to do the live where I show you what I do, as usual, as I normally do, which is cool. I love doing it, but I want to make more lives where I just hit go live and just hang out. So I'm thinking about... A, a new way of making more streams with even less pressure. So, not that it's putting a lot of pressure on me, but like, you know, I have to really adjust the camera, make sure it's, it's looking good and all. With a chill stream, basically, I'm just in there. You don't necessarily see what I'm doing. And you just, we just listen to music, talk during the breaks. And then I go into silent mode for like, you know, 20 minute sessions and we work together. That's that would be the idea, uh, like no talking, just nice, relaxing music. <coughs> Sorry. And then we all work together. And then during the breaks, we talk just like you do in, you know, workspace or in art school. Like you don't imagine being in art school and you have like drawing sessions, like everybody's drawing and like, I imagine that my chill sessions would be like that. So let's say I work on whatever art I'm working on at the moment, or maybe on my computer, whatever. And just, I, I do my session, figure drawing 20 minute sessions. I time it. 20 minute of just focus. Let's all focus and everybody goes in deep focus mode. And then we switch to, um, during the break, we switch to uh, discussion mode and chill mode. And we talk and we have, uh, we, we share um, our experiences about what we're doing. And that, but keep in mind, that would be as a, as an extra to, the streams that we have here, like you would have normal streams and also chill streams or focus streams. So what do you think? What do you think? Sounds nice. Um, is there a new vote for a different theme for the new challenge? We have to set it one up actually. So yeah, we, if you have, um, if you have, um, Cody, can you, um, can you actually create a poll? I think you can as a, as a mod or maybe Felicia, if you can create a poll for the next, uh, that would, if you, if you can try, that would be, that would be great. And yeah, by the way, saying that the focus, like the chill streams would be unscheduled, unpromoted, un nothing, like just straight up 
out of my out of my hat. Hey, hello, I'm going live, and because believe it or not, but it helps me uh, focus actually tremendously. Like being live, I work really well when I'm live. Like sometimes, yeah, I work slowly, but I get to do uh, uninterrupted work for more time than I do when I'm when I'm alone. Because when I'm alone, I kind of procrastinate. Like, hey, let's grab uh, a last coffee before starting, or let's. <sighs> and you know, when I have to go live, if I take a break, I take a quick break. And um, if I know that I'm being watched, I might actually try to really focus on what I'm doing. Sometimes I get distracted, you know, like your brain gets a lot of, um, you know, attention pollution, I guess. And being live and knowing that everybody in the chat room is trying to focus, I think it would really help me. Um, Sorry for your ears, I'm gonna mute. Yeah, I know it's kind of brutal. I staple my drawing paper, but. Oh, man. So, so mostly positive. Yeah, okay, so you don't think you can... All right, uh, I'm gonna check it because I'm pretty sure that I saw that. Sorry, I'm just going to check if my mods can do... Um... Oh, it's because you're a standard moderator. Mm. So there are two levels of moderators. I need to go in my channel. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do it, but I think I think if you're, um, I think there's another level of moderation that you can do. That's that should um, an editor has that role. Okay, all right, <laughs> I'll check it out. So if you have ideas for the next challenge, hit me up. Well, um, so bring the ideas. Well, we talk about the artist of today. Inspiration of the day, Pierre-Paul Prudent. Let's run the intro. <sighs> Inspiration of the day. I think I talked about Pierre-Paul Prudent before. Very influential for me. You know some artists that resonate with you? Like with Prudent, there is some type of emotional connection that I haven't really had with any other, any other artist. Uh, he's well known for, um, mostly he was portrait artists creating stuff like that. So yeah, you know, kind of boring Porsche stuff, but you know, an artist got to eat, right? Not his greatest uh, accomplishments are this, but academic work. So, looks cool and all, but his painting is not his greatest, um, not what he's mostly famous for. He's mostly famous for his drawings, male nude studies, or sometimes called academies. I'm going to try to find the academies here. Um, and this technique here, which is the technique we're going to talk about. Black chalk, white chalk, and toned paper. Black chalk, white, and toned paper. This is what the title is all about. A technique that's so, how did I say? A drawing technique that's so easy, it's not even fair. I'm not saying that the drawing is easy. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Wrong button. I'm not saying that the drawing is easy because drawing no matter what like the proportions the shapes everything that that's never easy Let, let's be let's be real let's be honest but the the way you can reach 
values and a very nice sense of shapes like that with very little effort. I'm going to show you how, like when you have toned paper like that, toned paper right here, this is discolored. Technically, it should be blue, light blue. Sometimes you see on the edges where it didn't take the sunlight because the sunlight is destructive for the paper. Um, the, it was actually blue, so I tried to, to tint this paper to kind of match it, you know, for the lols. But in reality, it was mostly blue in the... the sorry. In reality, it was mostly blue, um, as can be seen here. So it's most, mostly discolored now, but yeah, it was mostly blue. Uh, I think we might see some more in Google Arts. Oh yeah, look at this. This one has been well preserved, uh, so here it is. Look at this, the, this is the original uh, paper. So the, the sad thing is paper is uh, very fragile. It's a very fragile um, surface. And therefore, most of the drawings, they can't really be shown in any serious place because if they want to preserve the drawing as, as well as possible, they have to hide them from, from sunlight, from air like they have to put them in very um very specific conditions so that they don't uh self-destruct basically it's very hard to preserve work on paper which is like so much work on paper has been lost anyhow he's mostly well known for the these academies which are i i really love them not all of them equally uh, on Google Arts, they don't have that many, but like, you know, he was capable of creating an absolutely gorgeous sense of volume. And actually, oh, look at that. We're going to keep this one actually as a, as our model. Look at that. I actually, I, I, I almost feel like making this drawing. This technique, this, this, my friends, this technique is what I was talking about. Not saying that drawing a face beautiful like that is easy. Not saying that. But this effect, it's it's just child play. Getting this effect, getting the proportions right. No, that's difficult. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But look at that. You just use blue paper or whatever, whatever color you prefer. Blue works really well very elegant, very nice. Then you draw your basic shapes. Then you darken with a little like cross hatching with your black pen, your black pencil or your black chalk in this case, black chalk. Then you blend the black chalk to get this, you know, can you see it here? Can you spot the kind of blurry Can you spot these like blurry lines here? Spot these. Then you do the same with white. You cross hatch very crudely with white. Then you blend the white. And then next step is you cross hatch on top of the blended areas. So and it gives this. And he was only doing um, vertical cross hatching, following the, the four. So it's not vertical, like always like 90 degrees straight. No, it's following the curves, but mostly vertically. So there's an energy that follows the direction of the light. There is a texture. Imagine for a moment that he's not, that Prudent doesn't, um, doesn't do the, the cross-hatching. 
In this case, you would just have something very blurry like that. But thanks to the cross hatching, it just sharpens just a little bit. It almost feels, you know, at a, at a certain time, there was a certain era of uh, photography, black and white photography in the 19th century, when photography wasn't really advanced, the optics of most cameras were not super sharp, and the the subjects were, because the, the, the posing time was so slow, that sometimes the subject would just move ever so slightly, and the 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 models they would appear blurry. If you go to um, if you go to flea markets and you find you know these old photos from the 19th century, or if you go to um, I don't know a collector's store or whatever, you'll find them, and you see that the actual photo was blurry and they had to retouch. And they had to draw on the photos, actually, and or paint, draw, whatever you want to to say. So they usually resharpened, you know, the eyes, uh, re like corrected the shadows, and sometimes kind of, you know, photoshopped the the analog nineteenth century version of photoshopping, like photoshopping, you know, imperfections. <coughs> Sorry. And that's, it feels kind of like that. Hold on. Oh yeah, I can't, uh, I can't touch my computer because of this. All right. And it feels kind of like that. It kind of sharpens the edges, sharpens the, the details, and whatever is not necessarily super important in the background here is not sharpened. Look at the... Look at how it follows the curvature of the, the body. So you do that both for the black, as you can see here. So you blur the black and then you cross hatch very delicately to bring the texture. You do the same with the white. You blur the white and then you cross hatch very delicately. In this case, it's not even cross, <coughs> cross hatching. It's parallel hatching it it's gorgeous no matter how look at that so here you can leave some areas this one has been mixed with there is just so much to learn this is a ma mixed area where you have both black and white colliding they've all been blended and creates this kind of sfumato effect in reflected lights. This is a reflected light. So basically light that the light coming from the light source bounces on this surface of the skin and goes back here. And so this light is illuminated not directly by the light source like this one. This is receiving a lot of light from the light source because it's in t direct lightning, lighting, sorry. But this one is in reflected lighting. And for that, he was creating this um, really cool effect by mixing the two and by not sharpening. Look at that. Look at this beauty here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, look at this beauty here. This terminator line, nicely sharpened with just a little bit of detail here, just to push the black. This is, this is just gorgeous. Now let's see that reflected lights here in the breasts. Look at that. Look at how delicate it looks. It's gorgeous. Very, very dedicated. And this technique, believe it or not, but so if you have the, the shapes done properly, you can even like, if you want to trace, just do that and just try this technique. Just go ahead and fill the shapes with black or white, then blend the white and the black separately and then 
just resharpen with a little cross hatching. It works. You don't have to do cross hatching just like he did. You can do um, a different type of cross hatching if you want, no problem. It's gorgeous. It's wow. And uh, I don't know. It, it works so great. Look at how it follows the 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 line of the body. It's so delicate. So yeah, great artist, and we're gonna draw from one of these today, and it's going to be fun. So. <clears throat> What was the last theme? So, do we have a theme? Uh, do we have a theme for our next uh, art challenge, everybody? Everybody, we need an art theme. Uh, what do we have? Let me scroll back. Uh, it's funny, it didn't update. Okay. Okay. Uh, it finally updated. Okay. So let me scroll back. I've lost <coughs> contoured hatching. Um, contoured or volumetric, I think, would be a better word. Um, leave a like. Let's boost flows like live. Thank you, Jack. Uh, thank you very much. It actually helps a ton. Leave a like, everybody. Do we have a theme for our next? Um, I haven't. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. If somebody can, um, Cody, if you can keep track of the themes suggestions for the next um, challenge, because I. I have. <laughs> I have a hard time uh, keeping track of, of all this. Uh, still life of flowers, glass. Okay. Yeah. I see some ideas. Um, oh, nice. We, we actually have some ideas. So, still life of flowers, a glass. Uh, so, what are the first four? I can only pick the first four reflections, pets, and animals. Okay, I think we're, I think we're good. Yeah, okay. So, that's, that's going, that's going to be it. Okay, I'm gonna do that real quick and we're gonna start. I'm promising, promising. We're gonna stop this. So I have four suggestions. Doing a very quick poll. So here it is. Start a poll. So still life. How oh, you see the Van Gogh inspiration with flowers. Okay. Uh, next one is a glass. Very interesting theme. Uh, next one, Reflections. It's a very interesting theme. I don't know if it's a, a suggestion or if it was about what we were looking at for the yeah. Reflected Lives. I don't know, but still a very interesting uh, themes. theme. Sorry, Pets or Animals. Bam! Bam, you can vote. All right. <sighs> ah, that's cool. Is this still working? All right, so the B cam has been activated for the time. Just give me enough time. <coughs> Sorry. Just give me enough time to set up my uh, camera. Oh, I'm sorry, this B cam is really bad. Like, uh, I'm sorry, the autofocus is really bad. I have no other option at the moment. Like, I have no other way. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm trying to set up here my kind of uh, shot for, I'm gonna film, so no joke, I'm actually going to film 
some pencil sharpening. You might say, well, it's boring. We don't want to see that. Well, okay, I just need that for my uh, drawing course. So I'm gonna actually do that. Yeah, no kidding. But I'm promising you that we're gonna do the drawing right after that. And uh, yeah. So I'm using this B cam here. <coughs> um, because uh, I'm gonna use the other one to record. Okay. Uh, let's see. This was a, a always be on the lookout for glass, pieces of glass. You see, we actually can work on the theme of the next challenge here, glass reflections. Super cool. It's actually a, an old uh, coffee table like surface that was actually broken. I, I, I found it in the garbage actually. <laughs> I picked it up and this uh, this was um, someone was throwing this, uh, this throwing this away and I picked it up. This can be used as a palette and I, I tried to go for a black palette for some time. I don't know. I, I wanted to experiment with a black palette it really didn't work so don't don't work with a glass palette but i still find i still uh, <coughs> i have still found some very useful um, um, uh, use cases for this because it works as a black mirror i've always talked about using you know a black mirror it's a very important tool for your drawing but if you just take a glass surface, like any type of, like an old window, an old uh, coffee table, um, I know that for in, in an Ikea, um, there was an, an Ikea shelf that was just a piece of glass like that. You take it, you, you paint it black, but you actually have to put some, some um, something black behind it and you get something that's actually a black mirror and it works really cool. So I'm gonna use it for my, uh, my, um, my shot, but you can also use it in your studio, let's say to, you know, have a reflected version of your subject that's, um, that's going to help you spot the values much better than normal. Great. Um, it's a great way to see values. So instead of having a regular mirror at the back of your studio, you can also have a black mirror. Just take a piece of glass, paint the back, and there you go. You have a black mirror, paint the back with black, a very deep, dark black, very strong acrylic black color that you can find, and bam, black mirror for you. I, I never watched it. <coughs> I think I watched one episode of Black Mirror, but um, it's a different, <laughs> different topic. Um, it, is it good? I've heard that it's good. Um, okay, yeah, sharpening, sharpening. So I need to sharpen, I need uh, three shots. One of sharpening a graphite, the next one sharpening a charcoal <coughs> sorry and the next one will be sharpening a, a white pencil so that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna take this so you're really I'm taking you in the behind the scenes of how a Florent Farge video is created This is my main camera. Um, so I'm gonna change the lens. lost my chat again <laughs> it happens today and I know
Well, I think, yeah, reflection. It can be on top of water, it can be on, it can be, you know, um, actual mirrors, it can be glass, it can be anything. I think it's a cool challenge, reflection. <coughs> it can be a mirage. Um, I, I find it cool. I find that it's an interesting idea. All right. I'm going to take this light here. Nothing won yet. No. It's no. still up for the... It's still up. The, the race is still up. <coughs> Sorry. I'm coughing bad. Sorry. Um, I hope that I'm not ruining your ears. Oh my god. I need to clean this up actually. So filthy. Okay. So I would have this. This. Um... So I'm setting the autofocus mode here, uh, maybe here, oh, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm okay. I kind of just have a kind of a sore throat. Is that how you say? You know, I'm, I'm not like sick. It's just, you know, the annoying... It's just the, the annoyance of uh, winter time, especially when you have a kid. When you have a kid in uh, kindergarten, yeah, herbal tea would would feel great, actually. <laughs> Why is it always losing my chat? I'm sorry. I want to talk with you, but <coughs> sorry. Mm. I want to talk with you as as long as I have a voice <laughs> but my throat is not letting me speak at the moment oh no it's not allergy it's like you know when you have a kid in kindergarten <laughs> you get everything in the world yeah hot water and lemon and honey yeah sure Actually, I have a, I have a, my, my neighbor makes, um, makes it his own uh, honey. And it's great on honey, so. I'm gonna grab some at some point if the, if the, the, the stream lasts. Definitely. Yeah, I think speaking too much, I should be doing a chill stream with, you know, no speaking for this one. Kind of have the feeling that too much talking, too much talking is not good for the, the amount that my throat is capable of producing. All right, so do you say, are you saying that we have a winner? I'm not following you. Still life is winning. Okay, yeah, but pets and animals can still win. <coughs> Everybody won, really? 42 votes? We have 91 people here. You sure? Everybody voted last couple seconds for the vote. Like, really, hurry up if you have... If you haven't... Um, Voted, it's now, now is the time, now or never. Waiting, 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 waiting. 43, ah, oh, okay, it's the life with flowers. I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be, there's going to be a, a kind of um, a remontada. 
Okay, so still life with flowers. Oh, sorry. This is what happens when my mic has a... Okay. Okay, so I need to go there. But I'm kind of... <clears throat> okay, so how does it look? I'm gonna show you the... I'm gonna show you the shots, actually. Oh, so keeping it in focus is tricky. So I'm gonna try something different. Um, I would say the usual like two to three weeks, approximately. No rush. Like it's not a, it's not a point of putting pressure on yourself for that. Maybe I should put an actual deadline then, and okay. So how does it look like that? Warm light, maybe. It has to look sharp. It's for. It's for my course, it has to look nice, cinematic. Okay, maybe a deadline it is. So you have two weeks. If you want deadlines, I'm giving you new deadlines. No problem at all. I'm, I have no problem giving you Deadlines. I'm gonna put the. I'll put the. Oh, this finger is here. It's gross. Fingerprints. Yeah, normally it's not, yeah, it's not a bad pressure. No, it can be anything. It can be oil, it can be colored pencils, watercolor, gouache. It has to be art. Any medium works. Um, is this... Uh, it's not really cinematic enough for me. I'm sorry, I'm boring you with my videography right now. That, that's what you get for uh, clicking on my streams. Ah, is this? Doesn't look great. This yellow cutter here, this yellow box cutter doesn't look great. It's not visually pleasing. I like this geometry here. Yeah, cheating is always allowed. OK, 
Okay. Hey, 100 viewers, 100 live viewers, that's great. Hello, everyone. I guess we have some new people because I normally we're more at around like 60 and I'm doing the most boring stuff in the entire world. Oh my God. Well, all right. Does this look better? It looks kind of weird, right? Uh, Maybe I have a different... No, I don't think I have. Hold on. Attention to detail. That's what you have on this channel, ladies and gentlemen. So, real question, is this more visually pleasing? Which one is more visually pleasing? I know it doesn't matter. I think the orange, but you have like 10 seconds to vote because actually I need to change the blade of the orange. Oh, nice, a wood chisel, yeah. I had one nice and sharp. Oh, well, if you're a wood turner, though, I, I assume that you have like good, nice, sharp. Um... The orange one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the, the blade. Come on, we're not gonna have a poll to decide which which one is better. I think the orange is better. Not gonna lie, just the aesthetic of the just the aesthetic of this shot requires the orange, in my opinion. It's just my artistic take, but it's not. It's it's more the videography here. It really doesn't doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, the black mirror. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for. Uh... Can I get it? Oh. I was almost gonna think, okay, let's switch to the yellow one because I, I can't change the blade of the, the orange one. Okay, so for just for just couple for just a couple minutes, I'm going to be silent. Don't take it personally. I'm gonna be silent starting. So you entertain yourself, discuss with, your th with yourself, and if anybody's wondering why I'm not talking, just say we're in recording mode, right? Just uh, entertain yourself.
Wow, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that ASMR as hell? I... Ah, poison dart crafting, exactly. That's what we're doing on this channel. All right. So, the real reason, Let, let's talk now. The, the real reason is for that is because it gives you, well, the real reason why you do that is this. Look at that. Is this angle here, which is why I push it so far. It's not just about the lead. I wouldn't keep the wood here. I, I make it on purpose so thin and sharp for that. Look at how close I can get almost horizontal here. I can go, so obviously you can go like that, but you can go all the way here. So it gives you a lot more angle and a lot more variation in angle also gives you a lot more variation in pressure. And after that, what you need is not just the sharp lead, but also the length, so the overall length. So once it starts to become too short, you can put it in, a, in an extender like that, a pencil holder, to extend it, because the more length will also bring extra levels of pressure that you wouldn't have normally. Your hand is just capable of pressing so with a, a limited degree of variety, but by bringing it to such a fine tip like that, you actually make it easier to just bring a lot of, uh, a lot of control, a lot of variety in the in the pressure, in the amount of pressure that you can have. And it, it makes a crazy difference. Oh yes, extenders, they exist and they can save so many little bits, you know, old stick of, um, like, look at this. 
for example, I wouldn't use that because if you want to use this like tiny chunk here, except for like maybe the the, the blocking and doing doing stuff, you know, like very uh, quickly for a very quick sketch here, you can use that. But if you need the precision, you can still use that to get something kind of precise by just putting it in a penciled folder. I prefer shops for these. For the what? Uh, for the charcoal is nitrum is the, the way to go. And for the white pencil, which we're going to talk about today, is the Comté ones are the ones that I recommend. So um, I'm going to sharpen, actually. <coughs> I'm going to sharpen this one with a holder. Okay, so I'm going to go silent again, but I can still hear you, so feel free to talk. You can communicate to me. I can hear you. I have text-to-speech in my earphones here. It's just, I'm not going to be talking. It's just going to be ASMR time. ASMR time. Ready, everybody? Let's... Isn't that juicy? Not juicy though. Juicy I would say for the macro shots of paint from up close, but that's that's great. I love it. <laughs> I love these sessions. Like I think the focus time streams would be kind of like that actually. But oh 
look at that. So um, for this one, I'm not risking it to make the, the lead as long as the graphite one. No way I can get these as long as, as this one because this is more fragile. And when I was sharpening it, as you can, as you saw, I was taking it like that, upside down by putting the, 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 the tip on my thumb like that and kind of scratching like that. This is the technique that I found that breaks them the least because it's kind of soft. And it's great, actually. It's great that it's soft like that. So this is the technique that I found that doesn't break the, the, the lead. So if you really want to do that, if you try with too much force at first on this side to bring, take too big of a chunk, it can rip it apart. But by doing that technique and by kind of more scratching than trying to, to chop it off, it will, will, be, it will actually work great. Okay, now I need a, we're gonna do the final thing with a stick of charcoal and we'll be good to go for the, okay, so I don't have charcoal. Uh, so I, well, I mean a long charcoal. Okay, here. Ah, ah, oh, my babies. These are my babies. If you want charcoals, well, actually, I'm going to record that. If you're into charcoal, you need to get these. So, all right. So I'm gonna do ASMR time. And well, really I can't get this sponsored by Nitrim. <laughs> Seriously, they would love it to just, just have this. Uh, I actually worked with Nitrim at some point, which is why I have so many, I'm so lucky. But, hey. All right. All right, I can still hear you. I'm not gonna talk for a couple minutes, but this is, uh, this is it. The final ASMR time. Ready? Three, two, one, go.
didn't focus. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I think we got it. All right, we've got everything we needed. Ah, nice. <coughs> Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? <laughs> I'm gonna say I really love the ASMR. <laughs> How did you like the experience? Because no kidding, this could be what the this could be what the the focus sessions look like. <laughs> Almost like just me not talking, doing my stuff. And uh, basically, but you did good. Thank you for not bringing Jeff in the middle of my of my shot, because I actually uh, could have had the. Yeah, yeah, sorry. And uh, I, I know, I know. I was listening to everything. You know, I can, I can, let me, let me show it to you. Because you're not, uh, you don't believe it. When I say that I can hear you, like if it was someone right next to me. I can hear you talk. Yeah, you were tempted. I know that. Um, I can I can push the sound here. Um, so this would be here. Here. Normally, you will hear chat. This is what you sound like. Just waiting for somebody to type just to, to, so that you can understand what I'm listening to listening to this nonsense all the time <laughs> oh. I have the baton and one set of sticks thankful to find vegan charcoal yes I know willow is vegan but other forms are so hard to come by and need vegan B slash C allergy. Someone wanted to activate Jeff, say the one who wanted to activate Jeff XD. Hi. Who's this Jeff guy and why does everyone want to activate him? Okay, now you can activate Jeff actually. No problem. Jeff, welcome. So, yeah. This is what I was, uh, I, I've cut the text to speech, but this is what I'm listening. So I can listen to, I, I keep track, even though it doesn't feel like I'm reading, I can still keep track. And during the ASMR, I had your, <laughs> my ASMR was listening to your nonsense all the time. Kind of getting used to it now. Um, there you go, there you go, that's Jeff, hello. So Jeff is uh, a fly, which is an old friend of the stream. Uh, oh. Like, really, Jeff is enjoyed much more if you don't understand. Jeff is just uh, it's it's a fly, and we have uh, that we have adopted. And this is uh, our friend now. And um, like, stop asking questions, right? Like, why do you care who's Jeff? Jeff is just the most uh, beautiful thing. Like, I hope he's still out there. I still have good hopes. Jeff is kind of the star of this 
chat. And one of the main figures, one of the foundational figures, uh, with uh, Steven actually. So we have two characters here, which for some reason, like don't ask me why, they've taken like a huge, um, they, they've taken a, a huge important thing <laughs> in this uh, stream for some reason. So the, the text-to-speech voice is Steven, and the fly is Jeff. And nah, don't say that Jeff is gone. Like maybe he's just hiding somewhere, and maybe this big, you know, fly uh, spider web was was just uh, he was just taking a nap in it. You know who knows. <coughs> Who knows? Oh man. Alright. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not putting this. Jeff is in our hearts. I'm just going to put this easel back here in the back. Should we... Um, Can you actually read that? Just just checking the the sharpness. Uh, kind of. It's kind of blurry, you know, but it's you can read. I was just checking. <laughs> Cause this this can be a uh, a great uh, kind of a. Uh, oh, Kind of a blackboard like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the the sandpaper they make it. They they make it. Uh, Nitrum makes sandpaper, but they also like you can get any type of sandpaper. And actually, I've found that what I prefer to use. I just didn't want to use this one for for this because it doesn't look as good, but. What I mostly use is this. It's just a piece of wood, and I've just stapled some different sandpaper. And you can put all the different grains all in the same like piece. I don't know how much they. I don't know how much they sell this for, but no matter how, because they, they sent it to me. I'm just going to be fair. Uh, I don't know how much they sell this for, but however it is. It's too expensive. I'm sorry to say, sorry to say that, but because sandpaper is like ridiculously cheap if you get it in a hardware store. And you can get like, I actually prefer this one. So it's just less aesthetic. Um, you can make something like that as well. It works like, like you can have a little tear off like I had a tear off system, so basically I have several uh, several sheets. Um, I have several sheets here, as you can see. I can peel it off, tear it off, but really I never actually do because. If it gets full of uh, a thing like that, you can just scratch it off and it will get rid of most of the dust. So, yeah, any sandpaper works. I've tried um, very fine sandpaper like that, but this one, 
uh, the very, very fine, the extra fine, it might seem like a good idea, like you have less chance of breakage. It's actually way too tedious. And sometimes what works the best is the kind of the rougher. So I make this one to try it out. And I use this one just for graphite because it's extra fine. But really this one works just as well. And it's, this one is 10 times faster than this one. Yeah, because it's, just, it's more coarse and it's more rough. I don't know how to, how to say, but it's... Um, okay. Ah, finally time for some, uh, some drawings, my friend. So should we... Um, Let's bring back some, some music. Oh, uh, not this one. I'm gonna change the playlist. And once I have my music, I'm good to go. Yeah, I don't know about the numbers, the, the categories and stuff. Um, uh, I've, I don't know, like 120, like oh, 40. <laughs> Three hours of sharpening. That would be cool. I would be down to it. But at some point you have to make stuff with what you sharpen, right? Okay, um, actually Prudon was <coughs> working with black chalk, so I'm going to have to find it because I have one black chalk left intact. Uh, we need to find it. This one. This, my friends, is not charcoal, it's a square by Comté. And I'm gonna use it in the end. Um, I'm gonna start, actually, I'm gonna start with charcoal. So I'm just going to Start roughing in the main the main areas. Um, I think I'm gonna do the the rough blocking, and then I'll probably um, I'll probably go grab me some um, some herbal tea with uh, with honey. So black chalk has a binder, so it's black pigment with a binder. Whereas charcoal is a natural piece of wood that's been charred. And that's, it's naturally black. Charcoal is more light, but since it doesn't have binder, it doesn't adhere as well on the, on the paper. So it's way more um, more likely to to be wiped out. Uh, did you mention our Discord event? No, I didn't, but I can, definitely. Um, and I'm gonna put it here. 
here. Mm, hold on. Oh, thank you for the super chat. The dude 174. Thank you very much. This will help me buy myself a new camera. Thank you very much. I want to see some GGs for the dude 174. Thank you so much, my friend. Very much appreciated. I'm gonna make this camera much better thanks to this $10, like approximately 490 more to go. But we're gonna, we're on our, on the right track. Nice. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I was going to show you that Discord event uh, Thursday at 10 p.m. So approximately around this time on Thursday, we're going to have a, an event in uh, the Discord and it's going to be super fun in just making art. I don't know what you're going to be doing. I'm going to be there in the chat. Uh, well, in the in this little view, I'm going to put my camera because when I'm on Discord, normally I'm, I'm doing exactly what I'm doing here. So I put my camera and I stream even on Discord. So that's what I'm going to do. Maybe finishing this drawing if I didn't have time to finish it. Uh, you're welcome to do that as well if you want. Like some people just take their phones, just record what they're doing. And some people prefer to just sit alone without showing their camera, showing what they do. No problem. Like you don't have to show your camera. You don't have to do anything specific. You can just even stay in chat, in text chat. You can stay in... Um, um, you can decide to not talk, like that's one thing. You can just watch. You can hang out, and uh, but uh, it's mostly about having a fun uh, community experience. And we can, th the best thing is most people have their mics on and we can actually talk. Not just with uh, text like here on YouTube. But. So that's cool, that's cool, and I hope that many of you can join if you have time. It's a live streaming experience in a way, like this one, except it's more a community focused experience. And yeah, I don't think we have a theme for this one. We're gonna mostly improvise, I guess, but it's, you know, it will be um, mostly talking about art, talking about projects, geeking about techniques, uh, showing ourselves art, and just, you know, being normal art nerds together. Uh, no problem, no one. We'll have other events. No problem. We'll have definitely other events. Yeah, and you can you can uh, thank Cody because uh, that's he actually organized it. That's not that's not something that I've set up. It's Cody's idea. Cody's a our wonderful mod, and he's doing a lot of uh, cool stuff. So um, you can send a lot of uh, GGs to Cody for setting this up.
uh, somebody caught up with the the beginning of the stream with the Fist of the North Star. Technically, that's not how Prudhon started. That's not how Prudhon started, but um, just to keep things erasable for the beginning, I'm gonna start with the. Um, I'm going to start with charcoal, and then switch to the chalk later. Just. Um, the charcoal is very erasable, but the chalk is not. So I'm gonna keep the charcoal for the blocking. And then I'll do the rest later with the chalk and show you the actual technique. Oh my god, are you going to all nerd out about Vengo? <laughs> Cody's talking about Vengo every day. And now there's two. Oh god. But that's good. That's good. I also love Vengo, so I have nothing to say against it. Such a unique artist. Such a unique... Uh, such a unique like artist, such a unique personality. Seven of you? Oh god. Yeah, what I love about Vincent is that his story is is visible in his work. Like, it's kind of crazy. You can almost like the work almost opens a window to the artist's psyche. It's insane how how complex and how transparent his paintings kind of made him feel. Like, you, you don't need that many words, uh, just look at the paintings he did, and there's, like, artistically speaking, it's not my preferred style, 
There is just so much, you know, emotions, true emotions, and like a lot of honesty, really. And like he was just such a genuine artist. Oh, I know about his drawings. And it's crazy also that his drawings are so unique and so uniquely his. It's, um, yeah, it's wonderful. Like, you could, like, not knowing, like, if you just knew his paintings, and all of a sudden, you discovered one of his, of his drawings. You could, with very little knowledge about art in general, you could guess that it's him. Because they feel so much like him. That's what I was talking about with how, you know, genuine and honest he was. He did? Oh, that's a good school. Because I'm, I'm always boring you with the Barg drawings. And, uh... No, the background of this one is um, is actually watercolor toned paper. Uh, let me show you. It's a uh, toned paper that I toned with watercolor. It's actually a cream paper that I toned with watercolor. 
but you can also use any type of toned, like some paper comes pre-toned, like this one, for example, for a Prudhon master copy, this one would work really well, like it's kind of a, a similar blue. I would actually recommend something like that. Could work really well. Uh, it's just, I like to tone my own paper because I like to create Visible brush marks. I wanted to keep it like that. Um, since we're 100, uh, 100 live viewers, uh, let me remind you of the comments if you want, because I don't know anybody. I don't think all everyone knows about the comments. The comments are little functions that you can use. You can type in chat to play on the stream and you can actually make things happen. Oh, 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 my God, emoji wall, brace yourself. Emoji, emoji wall, wall unlocked, this is chaos, seriously, we need to break YouTube with emojis, so we have one minute. Don't ask Let's what's go going chat. on, just, we can do it. just follow Let's go crowd. chat. just do emoji wall, quick, just, spam emojis. Just, Go we ahead. need to fill the screen. Emoji wall is no just time emoji to waste. Wall. I'm serious. We have later. to spam emojis in chat now before no the question. timer runs out. Hurry on. It, hurry Quick. On. Just Let's go chat. We have to spam emojis in chat now before the timer runs out. This is no time to waste. Welcome to I'm the serious. Chat. It's a very up. serious Quick. art. Let's go chat. 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 And we do stuff like that. When we work. Hurry up. It ends in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
uh, the screenshot. Let me check. It's in live stream. Yeah, it, it works. Look. Ah, you're tempting me with French music. Ah, you want the French? This is La France. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, that's one of <laughs> that's another one of our jokes here. It worked. We just can't hear the bot. Mm. How come you can't hear the bot though? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I get why you didn't. Hear the bot. It stops snowing. All right. Yeah, be careful. Be careful. Make sure you focus on the snow and not on the stream. Just only the audio, right? Don't don't be. Don't be stupid. My job is to be the default voice for Microsoft Windows. It's not the best job in the oh, world, hello, but Jeff. it's not the worst. Can't complain. We have a vending machine that sells Fruit Loops in the break room. Steven, <laughs> of course, Steven is not Jeff. <laughs> is that Alexis' boy boyfriend? Well, Steven wishes. Did I say Jeff? Did I say Jeff or did I say Steven? Oh yeah, I might have said hello Jeff. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, it's like being, it's like having multiple personalities at some point. <laughs> I'm starting to question my sanity. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, I need to take a break by the way. I need to go grab myself some nice herbal tea and uh, but um, I'm gonna. Um, ah, come on, don't blame me for that. going to be my uh, waiting screen. And... And...
Uh, I'm seriously going to leave you with the elevator music. Hold on, I'll be right back. Right. Hello. Oh my god, this must be annoying. <laughs> ah, I'm back. Ah, nice. Herbal tea. And, um. Nice, um, some honey. Ah. My my throat will thank me. Um. with my um, University of Wisconsin mug. Honey and whiskey, really? Uh, actually, my 
my uh, my dad used to work there for a moment. Bought me this one. My son loves to play with the little ball. I never were. I I never was in the in the University of Wisconsin, but. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I muted myself, actually, sorry. It's just, uh... Yeah, I know what happened, I, I just muted myself. Because I didn't want to have the, you know, the slurping sounds, so I muted myself. I was saying that we visited Wisconsin, we went to just, um, to have a drive in the countryside in Wisconsin, we didn't find anything like to do because it's just so big and vast. And there were like farms, big farms and stuff. Not nothing really to visit except like, and I know, I just know about Madison, Wisconsin, which is a nice city, very cool city. Uh, but other than that, like, I didn't get to experience much of Wisconsin overall, like, but yeah. Bye, Felicia. All right, I'm muting myself. Remind me to open my mic again when I'm done slurping. Not by? What, what do you mean, Felicia? You said by floor. <laughs> Is this the autocorrect again? Okay. Oh, okay. I took it for me. I, I thought you were leaving. Uh, I kind of mind it. I don't like it when somebody. I know it's. Um, I know it's actually the polite way, in in Japan. Uh, like when you eat ramen noodles, you're kind of supposed to, like slurp. That's how you eat. So in this case, I don't mind, of course. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You can talk all you want about the Midwest though, but 
you know, it's making America so OP. Like it's just, it's just crazy how rich America is thanks to the Midwest. Like tons of countries would love to have a region so vast and just so useful for everything. But yeah, it's very big and we went there because compared to the countryside experience in Europe, you can have a drive in the countryside anywhere in Europe and you just drive for 15, 15, 20 minutes, even deep in the countryside and you'll find something to see. You'll find, you know, uh, an old church, something, you know, something to look at. Yeah, I have to say in the Midwest, we had to, <laughs> we went round and round, but we didn't really, we didn't really find anything exciting. But it's just so big though. Like for example, we went and saw the, the Mississippi. I guess the Mississippi in uh, I, I I remember going and seeing the Mississippi, but it's just so big that you can. It, I don't know, it's just so big. But I remember driving hours to almost see nothing, and it's such. It's such a different experience compared to Europe. Like Europe is so packed full of just stuff everywhere. And but this was this feeling was kind of um Yeah, it felt very boring. Like the drive was boring. Canada as well as I've been in, in Quebec and uh, the same thing with uh, with Canada like he, we went kind of north and at some point it's just trees miles away just trees and trees and just it's just crazy from a in european perspective to just see just wild forests like that best cheese yeah, we were, I'm sorry, but you're talking to a French person here. And we were sold on, apparently Wisconsin has the best cheese and he's the big cheese producer of the US. And we were kind of sold on this idea. We were like, oh, nice, we, we love cheese. But like what they were calling cheese, like us French people would just, we we wouldn't just uh, we just thought it felt like almost like plastic chewable plastic
What is Twizzlers? Oh yes, I have been to the Louvre. I have so many great memories there because when I was a student, I was living in Paris in a tiny room under the roofs where I had barely enough like room to fit and, and sleep laying down. Um, like this room was tiny. And when I say tiny, I mean tiny. I mean, six meters squared, just convert it for you. And I loved to be outside as much as I could. And I was under 25 at the time. And for us, under 25, uh, national museums are free. And was, this was so great because I could go to the Louvre almost every day for free, which gave me the luxury of, you know, first of all, not waiting in lines because I knew all the secret entrances. It was, it was before the kind of terror era. So we had like lots of uh, alternative, uh, alternative uh, doors. So you could reach from many doors and you could skip most of the lines because most of the tourists were trying to enter through the main entrance but there were actually three or four other entrances that you had to really know of because they were kind of underground almost that you really had to know of and i went there and i could just almost it was my second house and so and I went there and because it was free every day, I could go there as much as I wanted. I had the luxury of just experiencing single paintings. So you go in the museum and you, you stand in front of a single painting and you just admire it for hours and just you leave. That's that's just so so like it sounds so fancy because the ticket now is probably I don't know like 25 euros I don't know 18 maybe I'm pretty sure the ticket is is super super expensive here if I had to pay for it now I would probably not just um, look at a single painting that's for sure but because I wasn't paying for it and because I, anyway, I was broke, so it was perfect for me. Um, but this was such a great, um, this was such a great experience. And just every day I went there, I chose a, either a statue or a painting, and I would just no, I'm saying every day, probably not every day, you know, but very often, often enough at least. And I would get there and uh, stand in front of a, a painting that I liked. And yeah, it was just so cool. Hold on, I'm losing my chat again. Where are you? Crystal Bridges here is free, which is nice. What is Crystal Bridges? Is it a museum? I've never heard of it.
French toast? I don't know, I've always heard about them calling French toast French toast, but I, I, I don't know. I think it is, yeah. I think it might be pain perdu. Although they don't use actual pain perdu because I don't know. I don't know what they used. I think they use, um, I think they use, uh, um, some industrial bread. I don't know the American um, culinary specialties well enough, I'm sorry to say. I don't know the culinary specialties. Um, I had um, fudge when I was visiting the US. Mm. <laughs> of course, burgers and stuff like that. But all the rest was kind of... Um, uh, it also had barbecue once, which was typically American, I guess. But again, this was not a meal per se, it's more... It was not a dish. Yeah, it's maybe viewed as a fancy thing, but yeah, technically it's made with old bread. I like it, but um, we never usually have enough. Uh, we never usually have enough old bread for uh, for us to make it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start. And let's actually switch to the little chalk, black chalk. So you'll see the difference. It's way more sticky. Uh, would be so much easier when I have a good B cam that I can do that and I could have this automatically in my B cam instead of this which is kind of low quality can't use it to record the actual uh, the actual uh, art so uh, what I was saying, so let's try to do Prudent like, so let's try to be kind of dis 
thread the same way. Mine is a, a very soft one, so it spreads a lot. Yeah, it's it's part of the it's part of the, the 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 chalk that you get. Like you can get B, H, B, or um, or H. Then you do the same approximately with the white. It's not necessarily going to look great here because this uh, this face is so small. No, it doesn't come from the technique. You have to get you have to get the the right um, chalk. It's the same thing for the white here. Some of them are more blendable than others. So you do the same here with this. You first apply it almost carelessly. Just apply it at the right spot. No, I don't think so. Trompe l'oeil is just, uh, it just means illusion painting. So making it look like an actual... Uh... So then you blend this as well. You try to avoid spots where it mixes if you don't want to get any of this gray kind of discolored. Uh, you can always take it off and start over with clean strokes and you can also leave some of the underlaying color visible it will also make a difference in this case god it's small I'm gonna need my uh, I'm gonna need my glasses here I think the original was much bigger uh, so it's going to be tough to demonstrate uh, what I have in mind on this face here. Might take it to um, to the rest of the body actually. Yeah, the this. You first cross hatch crudely, you blend, and you cr cross hatch again. That's the whole technique. After that, you just have to know uh, <coughs> how to draw properly and keep keep it in. Well, actually, I can blend with that because it's so tiny. It might help. Proudhon was often. Uh, Blending with his um, his fingers. In this case, yeah, I'm not gonna make it perfect. 
for this tiny, tiny bit here. As you can see, sorry. As you can see, with very little efforts, you can get something quite convincing in terms of, um, in terms of, uh, like the sense of volume, the values. Like you get something pretty fast. Exactly. And for example, here, you, the, the first one you can cross hatch more or less carelessly, no problem, because it's going to be all blended out. Just don't want it to be too too dark. You just want it to be the right value, basically. And then you just redo the edges here. Yeah, I don't know, the, I think I might keep it going for uh, maybe another hour, so I'm probably going to be kind of tired in the end, so we'll talk on, uh, on Thursday, I guess. It's tricky to do the details, oh my god! <laughs> it's just so tiny. Look at the size of my... Uh, the size of my drawing tool compared to the area that I'm trying to work on. Uh, do you squint? Oh, absolutely. A lot. You know what, because it's so small, I'm going to allow myself some cheating. I actually use graphite. Just because <laughs> for the face, it's going to just help me so much. Just using graphite instead of the chalk. Because of the scale that I have to work with here. Oh so yeah, just, I was, trying to pay uh, to, to make a tribute to this technique it's trying to make a tribute to this technique but I'm gonna cheat a little bit yeah I the the original is kind of small the original is here. She does, is she? <laughs> She's not, no. So, yeah.
Hey, that's nice. Practice makes perfect. Or not. <laughs> it makes... Better than nothing. But it's still worth making. No, he it's not it's far from the original. I think the original was way bigger. Um I actually Oh yeah, yeah, some people just want to have a lower prices so they think by commissioning a a tiny painting they're going to pay less <laughs> exactly fist size heads that's always what I'm recommending and here as you noted I didn't follow my own advice Well, that's just weird, you know, you make art every day, something, some things turn out good, some things don't. And you start over. So here, the reflected lights, if you remember, he was using a, a mixture of the... Oh nice, I'll check it out, uh, I'll check it out, uh, Felicia. Thank you for, for letting me know. <clears throat> so here for the reflected lights I'm going to use the same technique that he did so you kind of blend the two together create this kind of mushy gray not really desirable but for the reflected lights it actually works Okay, let's take a break and check out these um, and just show you art, you mean?
Okay, let's check it out. My daily sketch, a morning walk in snowy Germany. Pretty cool, love it. Wow, Christopher, impressive, man. What I'm doing right now while watching the stream. It's crazy good. Awesome. While driving her car. <laughs> Look at that. Is that. It's a video though. Look at that. Awesome. All of them doing this. That's so cool. That's just so cool to watch what you guys are doing. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh my god. My drawing is so ugly in comparison. Ewk. Very, very inspiring. This is so cool to have like, you know, kind of a community of artists and we are all working at the same time. That's really, really cool. I really love it. Yeah, exactly. Good artist company. Alright, so I have my um, my lady on the reddish background to finish when uh, when I paint with Alpai on Friday. It's going to be cool. There's plenty of stuff you can do before a portrait though, so you don't have to rush there if you don't feel ready. Prudent was very inspired by uh, Leonardo, and you can feel it very much in his uh, in his art.
Hello everyone, hello rest in pain. Can you actually rest? In the book I showed you is the book, it's the monography of uh, Prudence uh, drawings. I think this one. Which, um, Prudent, la poésie du corps. Et... It's a tricky edition to find, I don't know if you'll find it. It's still labeled in francs here, so... Je sais pas si tu vas le trouver de loin. Il est encore en francs. Francine. I'm not gonna just overwork this. I just want to get a a sliver of likeness. I just want to have the texture oh no i i launched i unleashed the the kraken <laughs> now my, my approach on imagination and and realism is just you get a model for each different element 
and you create something new and unique out of combining them in a unique way so you get like let's say if i wanted to make this girl an angel for example i'll take this girl as the model copy the face copy the body and stuff and then just take a model for wings and then um, just maybe i take a model for the the halo i would take some some light effects some stuff like that so that's how i would do that's how it would work from imagination but um, I very rarely use from imagination alone for the main elements of my of my subject. It's mostly mental photoshopping that I do. It's like I take visual elements, I use models separately, and combine combine all of them. But yeah, but imaginative realism is not pure imagination. That's a difference. Like pure imagination would be uh, somehow, you know, expressionism, stuff like that. Maybe uh, naive art. No, I don't think so. No. I really don't think so because uh, Prudent's work is very idealized. And a lot of the... If you look at the models, they don't look realistic. They look ideal idealistic. They're very... Um... No, no, you can argue about that for other artists, but in this case, we're far from realism. Like a lot of, of the bodies that he makes, you show them to a doctor, and they would say that the body themselves, anatomically speaking, they don't, they don't make sense. So to say. And it's just because they are idealized bodies. Yes, we have a, a very uh, busy stream. I don't know, I just made a... I don't know what I changed. Yeah, I made a, an Instagram, like quick video on Instagram to say that I was going live. Apparently, just um, it helped uh, some new people to join, and it's pretty cool. Sorry. Hey, Jay. 
Missing Jeff. Huh, Gary? Alright. I can't believe the Jeff meme <laughs> stuck for so, such a long time. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, now we have to explain Jeff again to Eric. Someone, someone explains. Maybe Link. Can you? No, I don't think you can post links. Hatch crudely. I'm not gonna spend as much time for the for the body, I'm promising. Yeah, not any fly. He was mostly a friend. Yeah, he got several portraits actually. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Peter. Glad that you're here. Okay, so you blend after that, just spread it around. There's actually a, a hand here. Like she's holding a stick actually. <clears throat> Could you tell us a bit about selling art? Uh, is it a profitable business? No. 
unless you're a, a lucky unless you, you got a, a lucky kind of lottery ticket can can you make a decent living as an artist yes but you might need to yeah start with something else not rely on selling your art because it can be a very long way before your art alone becomes um, enough for uh, you know for a family for example but you can like what i recommend is first to make art it's <laughs> This is very strange, but a lot of people they don't they don't necessarily take that in consideration. Is your art worth making? Even though it's not selling, is it still worth making if it doesn't sell? If it never sells, would you still make it or not? And if it is the case that you would still make it, then by all means start by making lots of art and progressively try to find a way to make it a perfect uh, a, a sustainable uh, sustainable activity that you can do every day and uh, and you can do sustainably So in most cases, it might mean, yeah, teaching on the side, doing other stuff, even straight up having a, another job to pay the bills, right? Well, that's the spirit. If you don't think that you might sell anything, even better. Zooming in for 10 seconds. Gary, no spacing. Maybe it didn't work because I didn't have my face in the middle. mandatory
Okay, so his directional patching here. Ah, okay, I see it. Now, is it better now? It's not easy because of the stream delay, though. Command. Studio cam for 10 seconds. to normal. Okay, it seems like virtually everyone in academia works abstract conceptual. Yeah, that's what I had, like I went through exactly the same um, back then. And yeah, I had to learn traditional arts on my own. didn't go to art school but makes you more uh, more free actually get to really decide on your preferred course of action I'm cheating so much with my graphite here I'm sorry just need to speed it up not supposed to do what I do but anything for art right Sure, but a classical drawing takes time. I can really see them doing that in an art atelier and they would take like something like 60 to 30 hours with a student and something like that. So yeah, it's not shocking. I think it's great actually. It's actually great to find this new sense of just taking time. All the time that it takes. Something so unique in this day and age. Market, you know, they sell anything, so no.
No, it's okay. Like you have to not have to ignore that. Like this is not this is not the art world. What they call the art world is not your world. You might be part of an art community, but like when they say the art world, really you're not part of this world. This is just a different thing and they sell yeah sure they sell whatever they can sell lots of stuff they've been selling jpegs they've been selling you know a whole lots of uh, useless stuff No, this is paper. This is toned paper. This is uh, just drawing paper toned with watercolor.
All right, how long has it been? Three hour and a half, all right. Okay, I need to accept that I'm not gonna reach perfection in this one, so no problem. I'm going to just accept my fate. I'm going to leave the, like, the, the live on this note, almost. And I'll do the rest later when I have time. Just gonna finish this thing here before saying goodbye. But yeah, this was just demonstrating the technique a little bit, so I hope it was kind of helpful. It's a great technique. I recommend doing it with charcoal actually and not with chalk. I think it works better with charcoal. So not not like what I'm doing here. charcoal is lighter and more uh, you know, more easy to use I think well, for me at least some people prefer the prefer the chalk because charcoal is too vaporous almost but hey <clears throat> I'm not gonna finish, no way. Especially since I'm scaling down from the original. So, uh, yeah. Nah. Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, Friday, you you're right to talk about it. So Friday, another live, and we have a guest. And it's going to be... Oh, thank you, B3. Thank you very much. Can we get some GGs in the chat? Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for the 499. On uh, Friday, we'll have our uh, guest, Alpai FS, so don't miss it. And remember, it will start um, just um, it will start just one hour before before normal. Uh, so if you want to make sure you don't leave, you don't uh, miss it, just uh, go to. Uh, just go to, hold on, 
if yeah this is it if you want you if you have to go in my oh, actually this is not okay you can see it here but you go in um, next to my name there is subscribed and you make sure that you have all notification turned on like uh, like let's say like this for example if I'm subscribed to this fellow here and I want to receive all notifications and be notified when he's live I'm gonna click on all and that's what you want to do right I wanted to do it on my own but if you want to be there on Friday because it's not going to start at the usual time click on all or personalized with personalized uh, you can have like um, no I think you should click on all <laughs> or none whatever um, but yeah all right so that's it that's it for this live I'll see you on Friday everybody take care uh, take care of yourself and uh, have a good one thank you for everybody thank you everybody for the support the super chats you were amazing and uh, bye bye see you on Friday